Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Written in Blood, written by Sianna Bodson. The two humans stood on a raised platform, looking over the six students in the scrapyard, each a different species. Other, a short, whippy woman, with flaming orange hair, green eyes, pale skin, scattered, with freckles, spoke first. You lot are about to graduate with your certificates in engineering, either shipboard or ground. But before you do, you are going to do one final project, as a group. Jorka, a tall, muscular man with deep brown hair, bright brown eyes and golden brown skin, standing next to her grinned at the collected groans from the students. That's right. Get it out of your system now. As engineers, the time to grumble is before you start and after you finish. I expect professionalism out of all of you. Your job today is to install a massive J9 Rolls-Royce reactor behind you in... She pointed to a small shuttlecraft beside her. This. It needs to power up, provide energy to all the shuttle systems without overloading them, Jorga said. This will require fabrication of custom parts and the use of tools you've familiarized yourself with over the last two cycles here. You'll have access to the parts bin for this build. Other pointed to a timer hanging off a broken forklift. You'll have nine hours to finish this project. It won't affect your grades, but it will make a difference when we write our recommendations. Nine Earth hours, Jorga said, is equivalent to slightly more than half a galactic standard day. Your time starts now. Pan, a Quilari student, raised one of his upper arms, carrying a toolbox in his multi-used limbs while standing on just his hind limbs. What are we to do with the excess energy? Are we meant to shunt it off into the drain? Everything you need to know is in the shuttle or the reactor, Alva said. Jorga was watching the Terexi students, Livy, their star pupil, while the other students busied themselves gathering up their tools or conversing over how they were going to make it work. She headed straight to the shuttle and walked in. A moment later, she emerged, a puzzled look on her face. She smoothed her ruff with one of her upper hands while she scratched absently at her waist with a clawed, lowered hand. Evel Yorga, she's thinking, Ava said. Levy walked slowly around the shuttle, stopping at the rear. She dropped to her knees and felt around the exhaust nozzle on that side. Hey, a uh, pan, uh, could you bring me a number 12 spanner? The crowd now pulled out and their bubble, and they approached to see what was going on. Pan handed her the spanner, and she removed the cover plate from the engine nacelle. After a short look, she stood and began barking orders. Look at look, I need you to run some numbers, figure out the weight of the reactor's mass at around 20 standard gravities. We'll need a bracket that can withstand that. The alt clapped his mandibles in ascent and went to study the reactor. Pan, you're good with power distribution modules. Figure out what we need to power two class six sublight engines and 17 grave plates. You might want to step in and double check that I counted those right. The other students all had confusion clear in their faces. What reason could there be to have so many grab plates in a tiny shuttle? If Levy knew, she was keeping it secret. She let out the other students look inside the eight-seat shuttle, assigning tasks to each as they passed by. Most of them were okay to go along with it, except for the Ranthu student, Imu. They were already a certified engineer from their home system, but were there to learn. Terran engineering secrets their people could use to compete in the shipbuilding market. Little child, they said, running organometanic claws down the scales over their chest. I have been an engineer since before you were hatched. Do not presume to tell me what to do. Undeterred Levy responded brightly. Okay, Imu, what would you like to start on? She showed them her data pad and already had a checklist of things that needed to be done. They pretended not to pay any attention to her list, licking their four non-blinking eyes one by one, before moving towards the back of the shuttle in a strange gait that used both of their hind legs and all three of their tails. I'll make sure the reactor bay is ready. Ritalik sent the numbers to her pad and then went to help Pan create the power distribution modules. 
We need to make two, he said. In case one fails, safety regulations require it. Right, right, Pan said, doubling the parts list. Livy took her laser measure out and checked the reactor to determine where the mounting brackets would attach. She was making it all out on a diagram on a pad when Yorga approached. Measuring the reactor, why not just use the published data sheets? he asked. Even if they came straight from the factory, which I highly doubt given the age of everything around here, there could still be some damage from the shipping or something that could offset one of the mounting points. It's better to measure it directly and know for sure than to guess. So, uh, you are listening. Always. Levy finished up her measurements and went to the shuttle to take the measurements for the other half of the equation, where the reactor would mount to the ship. Child, get out of my way, Imu growled at Levy. It's a Hydrian shuttle. The mounts are 12 equidistant points and a circle exactly 1.17 spans in diameter. Levy sighed. Imu, I would just feel better if I measured it for myself. It'll only take a moment, and then it'll be out of your way. Bah! Fine! Imu stepped back and slapped their center tail onto the ground impatiently. After Livy had carefully measured under the plate that Imu was removing, she marked down what she'd found and stepped back. Yep, just as I thought, she said. She called out aloud enough for everyone to hear. I'm heading in to fab a mounting bracket. I've joined her in the fabrication bay. Tell me what you're building. Livy turned her pad around to show her. This plate allows 10 mount J9 to firmly connect to the 8-point Kolari mount that someone rigged into the shuttle. Ava grinned. Good girl, you didn't just look at the data sheets. What about these sizes and materials? Levy gulped. It's a little bit of guesswork. I looked at the engines and figured as much as 20 standard gravities for maximum thrust. From there, I determined the force of the reactor's mass at those gravities and added 20% for a safety margin. Aye, you were paying attention. Ava nodded, and Livy fired up the parts printer. While it worked, Livy turned to Ava. Something uh, I never understood, she said. Humans got to the stars on their own faster than any other species. Why is that? What is it you think that makes us special? Ava asked. Fierce warriors were not the fiercest, nor the worst. Strength were not the strongest. High gravity world, the Cylons come from a world even heavier. Compassion, the High Radians have us matched, if not beat there. In reality, there is nothing that humans can do that can't be bested by someone else, except for one thing. The fastest way to get a human to do something is to tell them that they can't. Levy's eyes grew wide. Y you mean, you shun rules? No, no. Not that they aren't allowed to do a thing, that it can't be done. Ava laughed. The quickest way to get a human to devote themselves to something pointless endeavor is to tell them that it is impossible. Like building a racing shuttle with low-gravity species that can safely ride in. Figured it out, did ya? Ava pointed to the printer, where Levy's part was complete. I saw the grab plates mounted in front seats, then looked at the massive engines you stuffed into the nacelles, and it all made sense. Walking back into the yard, Livy found Emu standing with the tails covering their feet, head bowed. I uh, apologize, Emu said. You were correct to measure directly, as someone has altered the ship previously. No harm done, she said, patting the shoulder. Help me install this bracket. By the time the clock ran out, the reactor had been installed, power distribution handled, and all safety and pre-flight checks completed. As a celebration, the humans piloted the ship, taking the students for a short, high-acceleration trip, hitting eight Earth Gs, just a little over 15 standard, before turning around and coming back. After they landed, Yorga addressed the group. More diplomas and certificates have been transmitted, along with our recommendation letters. Any one of you can find work in human space if you want it. Well done. Other waited for the cheering to die down. If you remember nothing else from this, I want you to remember these two things. There is no such thing as too safe, and safety regulations are written in blood. The shuttle through the station for adjoining flights is standing by at the main hangar. You are dismissed, Yorga said. Levy, if I could get a moment of your time. Levy walked to the two humans. Can I give you a hug, she asked. Of course, Ava said, hugging her. Yorga joined in. Group hug! 
Check your recommendation. Livy raised a pad and checked out her diploma and certification, then flipped to a letter of recommendation. You... you mean it? She asked. I do. Abba watched her closely as a raised eyebrow. You've got a couple of days to decide, but if... Uh, yes, absolutely yes, but... But what? Jorga asked. If you're both going to be on the ship, and I'm definitely going to be there too, who will teach the school? There are schools like this all over human space, not just engineering, but all trades and arts too. Ava grabbed one of Levy's lower hands. We do a two-cycle stint on a human ship, then come back here and teach for two cycles. I've uh, added you to the ship's crew, but would like to add you to the school as well. We could use the help, Yorga said. I think you'd be a fine instructor. You're already better fabricator than I am. They were making plans on where to meet and the station when their pads chimed. Huh, do you ship board safety regulation? Ava said. Livy read it out loud. Do not use wormhole generators to connect two parts of the ship, such as the mess and recreation areas. Pretzels or other materials are not to be sent through wormholes that terminate anywhere inhabited, even for testing purposes. What the? Is that really a thing that makes sense to say? How is that even possible? Ava looked over at Yorga. Jackson? Yorga nodded as he scanned through his pad. Probably. He's no longer on the crew list, and neither is Slate. It looks like Jackson was fired. Ava kept scrolling through her pad. Oh god. Slate's in orbit. Says he died when the impromptu experiment went awry. Experiment, my ass, Yorga said. Jackson and Slate were fooling around. Levy caught up with what they were saying. Oh, safety regulations are written in blood. Now I get it. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Van 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.